Hi, welcome back to the channel. This is a super last minute video that I've thrown together just because I've received a lot of requests about my reading workflow and if this is part of the course and no, it's not part of the course because my reading workflow looks at different applications and it's still evolving and yeah, because it's different applications and a bit of a different workflow, it's not part of the course. But nevertheless, I thought I'd make a quick video on this because it's holidays times or holiday times coming up and a lot of people will be using various read it later apps to store their reading and then read it whilst on holiday on a mobile phone and then want to process that into their database. Now I did this exact same thing. I was using Readwise's reader app and I really enjoy the app. Very great user interface, super excellent functionality. But the one thing that really got to me was the export workflow. The reader app exports, articles as individual pages. My preferred workflow is to import or to export articles as blocks. And I'm going to get into a little bit of why I do that later, but suffice it to say this became a little bit annoying for me. So I had to find another solution. Now, thankfully, just before I started using the reader app, the Omnivore team reached out to me and told me about the Omnivore app. Now, Brian Santa has written an article quite a while back on how you can use Omnivore. And I was already at this point, I just moved over from Pockets to Reader and I was like, oh, don't have much time to look at this now. I'll look at it when I get back from holiday. And when I did get back from holiday, I started looking at Omnivore and there's still a few things that needed ironing out from my workflow, but I'm very happy to say that I have yeah, I worked with the team a little bit and developed something that works very nicely for me. So this is what I'm going to be sharing today. This is not a Readwise versus, uh, or sorry, Reader versus Omnivore comparison. It's not looking at a deep dive into Omnivore at all. It's just quick and dirty. I'm going to publish some of my templates that can help you get to this workflow very quickly. And yeah, hopefully that will save you a lot of time and frustration with your import workflow. It really is a great app. Both of them are very good apps. So worthwhile looking into both of them. And I might make a couple of points on Reader and Omnivore as I go along. So this is Omnivore's about page. You don't actually land there when you go to omnivore.app. You go to this page here, which is a sign in page. But if we look at this Omnivore about page, it basically just gives you a little bit of a rundown of the app. And the cool thing about Omnivore is that it's an open source app and it's also free to use. So that's a big benefit for a lot of people, I think. And yeah, one reason to, to have a look at it at least. Anyway, so if I sign into Omnivore, I'm just going to show you quickly what the user interface looks like. This is all of my articles that have come into Omnivore. Okay, this one is an error. So let me just delete that there. And there we go. Cool. So maybe let me just zoom in here so that you can see it a little bit better. And I have got a couple of views. I've got this card view over here, or I've got the blog view. I don't know what that view is called, but anyways. And this is my inbox. So basically any articles that I send to Omnivore get stored in this inbox. So how do I actually send an article to Omnivore? Well, I've just opened up the Substack recommendations and I've gone to this article here and I like nothing as easier than earnestness because earnestness is cool. And I've installed the browser plugin over here. It's an Omnivore plugin. And all I need to do is say Alt O and then this goes to my Omnivore page. And if I look at this article over here, go to Omnivore. Let's just refresh this. That article now shows up. And the cool thing here is that I can change the appearance. I can change the margin, line spacing, font, make it bigger, make it smaller. It's a very nice user interface to present your reading in a way that you like. Anyways, the really cool feature that I like about Omnivore is your ability to highlight, take notes whilst reading in Omnivore, and then export those notes to LogSeq. Now, this was a workflow that I was battling with with Reader because it would do it to pages. But what LogSeq does is it does this whole workflow from a block-based perspective. So let's look at some other articles that I've read already, and then I can send those to LogSeq. Okay, so here's an article on why does chronic pain hurt so much? And I've got a bunch of different highlights over here and some notes. Now, to send this to LogSeq, all I need to do is go label. And then I have created this label, which is sent to LogSeq. So I say sent to LogSeq. 
and enter. And then what I do is I archive this so that it just removes from my inbox. And that is just a standard E shortcut. So E is standard across Reader actually, Gmail, all these applications. So I use E, I archive it. But in my LogSeq database, and I'm gonna show you how this looks, I have got, uh, let me just go here to my settings and my plugin settings and I've just scrolled down because my API key was there. I'm not gonna go through the whole integration. Maybe I'll just quickly run through it. I've set my omnivore search filter type to be advanced because I don't want it to bring in all my articles or all my highlights. I want it to only bring in things that I have labeled with sent to LogSeq. So this is my workflow. I read the article, I say send to LogSeq if I want to send it to LogSeq and then it comes into my, art, my omnivore import, import page. Okay, so it's actually not syncing with this graph, it's syncing with another graph, but that's not important. And then I'm bringing in my highlights uh, in order of location in the article. I'm using this Omnivore Imports page to sync those articles too. And then I'm, this is a super important thing for me. I'm using this um, template to bring in different articles. And it's got here a whole bunch of things that you won't really see, but it's got the source, or sorry, the author or the producer, the source, different tags and the link and then this input thing which says articles. So that's super important and I'll show you why. And then it also I also have this highlights template that brings in the, the highlights in a specific format. Okay, cool. So I'm quickly running through this. Sorry, it's not very really detailed, I know, I know. Um, and let me go here. And when I have an import, it then, produces this whole block here using block properties, super important to systematize your inputs in your database. And it says there, the producer, it's an article and the link and then the source is omnivore inputs. Now, what I really like about this is that I have the block that is, that the highlight block has this greater than sign, which renders it as a quote block in Markdown. So I can see what is not mine and what is mine. And here I have the, what the author is saying, and then I've got my little observations. Okay, so what I would then do is I could add tags here and process this whole article. Okay, it's maybe not a very good one, but nonetheless, let's quickly look at how I might do it. And then if necessary, I would tag at the individual block level of what I'm writing, if there's something that's not, um, yeah, not covered by this full tag in the block. Okay. So this is getting, I'm going through this very quickly, but nonetheless, the thing that I do next is I create a content block in my daily journal. So I say JJC that brings in just a separator, which allows me to uh, input anything that's external in my database. And then as part of this workflow, I then, once I've processed all the tags and read through this systematically and done the highlights and done all the things, I can then move this across. So that's basically like my check marks exercise. So I'm saying I'm importing it, I'm processing it, and then I'm moving it into my daily journal. I can also quickly go here to this LogSeq Omnivore plugin button, push that, and you'll see there that it will bring in the articles that I've said sync to LogSeq. So this is that article that I just read, and here we go. I'm just gonna say add this thing. I'm gonna add the, ta the tain pain and chronic pain, just in case. I don't have a chronic pain tag, okay, cool. So I want to actually remove this here. Yeah, I like this thing here, so that's an interesting thing. And I'm actually gonna add a new tag, which is chronic pain, because I might want to refer to that at a later stage. Okay, and then there we go. I move that article across, and that way I can see what I've done and what I haven't done. It's super helpful just to have this system of moving things from Omnivore to LogSeq and then once I've processed it in LogSeq, moving it to the daily journal. So that's why I like this block-based workflow. The other thing that I can do with Omnivore is I can go here to my profile. I can create a email address. I'm not gonna go into it and create my email address just in case someone just decides to send me all the spam. And what that does is then I can use that email address when subscribing to different newsletters online and it will send it directly to my Omnivore database and it will show up in newsletters. So 
very helpful little tip. Another cool feature about Omnivore is that they have an iOS app and an Android app, and you can also easily send tweets to Omnivore. So instead of saying at Readwise to store a tweet, what you can do is say share via Omnivore. And this is the output of a Twitter thread. So all of these are individual tweets. Uh, Guruwanda on Twitter, very cool. I'm probably pronouncing that name wrong, but it's really a nice rendering of all those tweets. Now, one thing I have noticed is that sometimes not all the tweets come up. So this one was a Twitter thread of 40 tweets. I'm not exactly sure what the case is here, but again, not the end of the world for me. I don't use that feature too much, but I, I'm sure that this is something that will improve in future. Omnivore is being developed rapidly. There's lots of cool features and they're also doing it 12 days of Christmas at the moment where they're announcing new features. So I could have waited and done like a nice, well put together video, but I just wanted to make sure that you were ready for your December reading with this quick little introduction. So maybe I'll do a later video or another video at another point. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below and I will address those in a future video. And for those of you who are wondering where I've been and why I haven't been producing YouTube videos, well, it's because I've been working on LogSeq Mastery, the course, and this is just one piece of the, the puzzle from LogSeq Mastery, which is looking at taking notes on source-based writing, or oh, sorry, well, source-based writing, taking notes on content. And the whole idea here is that I have different sources that I'm reading and then taking notes on or annotating those things, taking notes on them and then inputting them into my database. So you can see here that inputs that I know I'll refer back to, and I think of those as books, pages, and courses. So, sorry, books, PDFs, and courses. So I think of those as like large pieces of content that I know I want to return back to and that's why I put those in pages. Now, for the rest of these things, these ad hoc inputs, articles, videos, podcasts, tweets, these are small pieces of content and I really don't want them clutching up my database being their own pages. Now, the Tools for Thought, or specifically LogSeq, has really improved from a, from a performance perspective that pages don't really slow it down as much anymore. But for me, it's all about just having as few nodes as possible. So I just want to have these pieces of content as blocks in my daily journal that I can find again by either finding the author or just by consistent tagging. And that really helps me just to streamline my process and also move it from Omnivore to, or well, actually from any reading later app, so not in my database, to in my database, to well-processed and ready to go. And I don't need to have a Zettelkasten where I'm doing absolutely everything perfectly at the source. I just add a couple of tags, write down my observations, and then later on I can go and find those things if necessary because they're well tagged. So this is my approach. The thing to note here is that this is just one sort of writing. If I zoom up, if I go up here, this is part of like a five P's framework that I've put together for personal knowledge management. It's all about planning, plowing, planting, propagating and probing. I'll probably write a little bit more about that because I've put a lot of content together and I think it's a bit of a waste if it's only in the course. So we'll see how I can repurpose some of that for written form. But you can see that this source-based writing is only one part of your planting. You're wanting to put a whole bunch of other things in your database and there's ways to think about doing all of those. If you wanna have a look at that, that's available in the course, which is now finished, thankfully, and yeah. It's available at logseekmastery.com. It wouldn't be a YouTube video if it didn't have a quick plug, I guess. But yeah, this will be my last video for the year. It's been an epic one working on Logseek Mastery, working on a couple of YouTube videos, doing a couple of collabs. I feel incredibly grateful for the Logseek community and the YouTube following. This wouldn't have been possible without you. I know that I'm not the most interactive person at times on YouTube. Maybe I'll get a little bit better at that now that I have a little bit more bandwidth and a little bit more time. But yeah, thank you so much. I hope you have a great festive season wherever you are and take care of yourself.